slightly uncomfortable calling this video the where is the holiest place in the Scottish borders because I'm not a religious man. In fact, I'm the opposite. I would probably say I was an atheist. But the good thing about religious stories is it transforms a normal historical fact into something supernatural, sublime and revered the world over. When you think of religious sites in the Scottish borders, you probably think of the abbeys, Dryborough, Kelso, Melrose and Jedburgh as the most important places. But if I can uncover any truth or evidence to this wonderful story that I'm about to tell you today, it will make these places in religious terms insignificant. But it will make the place that I'm investigating not only the most sacred site in the Scottish borders in Great Britain, but potentially one day the holiest, most important religious site on earth. And my story starts here at the wonderful Cross Kirk in Peebles. An ancient ruin that I, I really didn't know about. It's not something that's ever really publicised that this is in the middle of Peebles. I, I didn't know it existed. But the main legend which makes this kirk interesting is the reason why it was built here. Because on this site was discovered the remains of a saint. And that saint was Saint Nicholas, no less. Slappy Claus is buried in peoples. <laughs> Thanks, man. It seems incredibly far-fetched. Unbelievable, even. That a third century bishop who lived in Turkey and had enormous importance in the Christian world should have his remains turn up in peoples in the 13th century. But maybe it's not quite as far-fetched as it first seems. And the reason that I've been drawn here to people today to investigate this is not because of the church. It's because of a massive, huge, symbolic cross which has been legend in this land for years. And apparently, on a hillside not far from here, this cross exists, but nobody knows why it's there. I have a theory. So let's go north out of Peebles. Try and find out what the real religious significance of this area was. And why did Santa Claus end up buried here? So I would just I would just want to say if there's any kids watching this, it's obviously not true because Santa's not dead, is he? He's still alive and well, so he can't be buried here. This hill here, just outside Peebles, which was known as Kidston Hill, but is now known as White Meldon. And the hill at the back there is Black Meldon. What does Meldon mean? Well, Meldon roughly translates to the hill with the cross. But where is this cross and why? Cross on White Meldon Hill here isn't the only bit of interest. The place is absolutely steeped in history. There are hill forts, standing stones and remains galore all over the place. So this place was used by the Selgovai as their main and largest hill fort in Peebleshire. It was later adopted by the Romans who built their camp or their fort at Line, just across the other side of the hill there that I looked at last week. But 
it was after the Romans left and the Selgovae tribes had, had moved on that I'm interested in today who were the next group of people that revered this hillside seen it as a magical, mystical, important place well I can tell you that those people were the Knights Templar And the knights came here in the 12th century. These were their lands. These were the lands granted to them by the king. They had bases all over here. Is there proof of that? There certainly is. There are lots of places near Edelston here, which is just along the road for White Melvin Hill, which give us clues to Templar activity. There's Temple Hill up there, Temple Wood up there, and Bellevue Temple is also up there. But there's no point in getting excited about Yeti footprints when you've got a fully grown male Yeti in captivity a few miles up the road. over the border in Midlothian but home to the Knights Templar in Scotland from here that the Knights held massive influence over all the people shire and right across the Pennycook likes of Roslyn Chapel and I think from their base here they decided to make that huge cross on the hillside of Peebles because that they thought was the sacred place It really is an amazing thought to think of the Knights Templar, the holy order of warriors from Jerusalem, is this place and Scotland as their base. But what was it about that hillside in Peebles? What was it about it that they thought was so special? just now. You can't see it on the ground, it's too big and too old. But was it the Knights that named this place the Kidston Valley or the Kidston Hill? And apparently they named it Kidston Valley or Kidston Hill after the Kidron Valley in Jerusalem. An extremely holy site. A place next to the Temple Mount, a place where Satan tempted Jesus. Place where the book of Revelations tells us that the chosen 144,000 people will ascend to heaven at Armageddon. Did the knights recreate that place here and mark it with a cross?
Now I realise that the more and more I go on with this story, the more and more far-fetched it's sounding. But it's that number, the 144,000, the 144,000 chosen people, the people who were marked with a cross on their head to give them a right to go into heaven at Armageddon. That number bears a significance here. And that's what's interested me. Because when eminent local archaeologist Clement Gunn analysed this place in the early 1900s, he measured the cross. And the cross measured exactly 144 feet. It's so large, this cross. I think it's going to be very difficult to see it from the ground. I think I might need to come back with some aerial power. Templar choose this place as their Temple Mount. The place in Scotland where the chosen 144,000 would rise to heaven on Judgment Day, Armageddon. The evidence is there. Whether it's true or not is another story. But if it is true, there are lots of lovely B&Bs and hotels in this area for people who are ascending. I think you would need to instigate a, a good few massive leaps of faith to take that story literally, literally and believe it all, but we'll soon find out anyway when Judgment Day comes around, whether or not the top of White Melbourne Hill is in fact the most sacred and holiest place on earth. I do apologise because some of you may be thinking, wait a minute, what about the old St Nicholas story? Santa Claus buried in peoples, what's that got to do with it then? Well I think what that story does is it just shows us that someday very important, someday that had rights over this massively important Christian relic were here in peoples, i.e. the Knights Templar. And they thought that peoples or the surrounding area, the Kidston Valley, were massively important places, important enough to bring the body or the remains of one of the most important saints it just collaborates the whole story. Why not come down and see the church and peoples for yourself? Where Santa's remains are now, right?